Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody and welcome to the Women of BSV. In this particular episode, we have Ruth, Diddy and Ray. And our special guest today, we have Xiaowei Liu, who is the creator of Script. Mm -hmm. And we are very pleased to have you, Xiaowei, because I know that you do a course on YouTube, which is called Bitcoin Class with Satoshi. Yeah. And you are part of the um, Social Bitcoin Web. And you're also doing, I think you're following Craig's philosophy class. And you're also doing a technical class with Craig as well. So yes. yeah. welcome to our show. Okay, thank and you. As we've ever... uh, hardest show in BSV. <laughs> <laughs> when we get our words right, when I get my words right. The fun um, show in BSV. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us. And basically, with everybody, we do a bit of a deep dive and we go a little bit back and find out about yourself and what your background is and how you came across Bitcoin SV. Cool. Yeah, for me, uh, I'm kind of like a standard uh, software guy. I was doing my PhD in computer science and found a job at uh, Facebook at a uh, research scientist. So I worked there. And then it was because of Silicon Valley, right? Always people are like, you know, poke around to see different kind of like a te technology, you know, in the spare time, you know, just follow what's going on. And then it was- What like, kind of, wh when did you join Facebook? What kind of year was that then? Uh, 2015. Oh, okay. So, that's, that's yeah. That's recent. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. how was that? Uh, I mean, uh, pretty good. I mean, if you are just, uh, you know, out of the, you know, school, it's almost like uh, pretty much the, I wouldn't say the best, but uh, it's one of the best places you can go for, like if you mm -hmm. do software and uh, great perks, right? Everything is pretty covered. Like uh, you pretty much, uh, you, you go to, um, they say it's a campus. It, it does feel like a campus. You get everything. Mm -hmm. it's pretty much it's like a mini Society, you, you can you can just pretty. I know people they just stay there. They eat free food, free shower. You know there are even some like a couch around if you just want to. You can you can totally live there, never leave. You have a, a dental. You have a, even have a, you can have hair card. You have a free laundry. So you pretty much got everything and wow. free food. So it's well, it's, it's, I would say. it's, it's good uh, to hear that they look after their stuff. That's a really yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's competitive, right? Because uh, you know, you know, the engineer they can go work for Facebook or Twitter or Google or Apple, right? So it, it, it's very competitive. That's why, like, uh, they just throw the the best per per perks at the people. Hopefully, they can keep the talent. Right? It's uh, it's pretty competitive. So do they have beds there? Oh yeah, yeah, like little dormitories. Wow. They they kind of have they have some like uh, build some like a uh, housing near the campus so uh -huh. you know I I choose not to live there because that's kind of weird it's like uh, you never get off the hook it's mm. like you work you are you are with these people and then you go back to your home it's again your neighbors so it's kind of weird to me so it, just, well, it's it's interesting I worked at a theme park once and it was pretty much like that because like literally you lived on site so you did the job but you were still living with all your colleagues afterwards so I do understand completely where you're coming from because when it's 24 7 every day it can get a little bit a little bit too much to be fair you do need a bit of freedom and a bit of just signing off from everything and just you know letting your brain relax from from the, the like a continuation world. of university as well presumably if you live like that yes yeah, you know, if you uh, do not responsible for your own laundry and house and everything. Yeah, yeah you, it's, they call it like a, glad you mentioned it, about theme park. But they, they say it's like a Disneyland, but for adults, it's pretty much, <laughs> you, you got everything covered so you, you, you can have fun and uh, yeah, life is easy, but it just uh, depends on like your personality. Some people mm -hmm. like it, some people don't like it mm -hmm. in the long term. So for me, I, I was kind of looking around and then you know, about, uh, I think it's about 2017, right? That's how the crypto, you know, space that uh, exploded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. Attention. 
And that was, was when when was it when BTC went to a stupid amount? It was like twenty thousand yeah, or 20, something 000, for the first like, time. 20, I think yeah, it's about I literally watched it at the end beginning of the year. It's like a couple of thousand, and then it was by the end it was almost like a twenty thousand. Like, <laughs> yeah, unbelievable that was. It was like especially if you were watching it and you were in the space. It was like wow, <laughs> just mm -hmm. candles going up and up and up in a straight line, really, more than anything. Mm -hmm. So were you were you kind of just watching and then finding out and learning about Bitcoin at the time or did you actually invest in Bitcoin at the time or you were coding or what were you doing at, at that point then? Uh, I, I, I didn't invest. So basically for me, I'm kind of like a, if I want to actually, you know, pay my, you know, either pay my, spend my time or my money on to something, I, I want to make sure first I really understand it, right? Because otherwise it's it's almost like a gambling, you know. Mm. I'm like just mm. throwing some money. Hopefully, you know, you will. I, I will make some more. So, but uh, for me, I was watching it, but more like uh, I'm really here for the. I mean, it's kind of a cliche, but I'm really here there for the for the tech. You know, it's, tech is more fascinating mm -hmm. to me than just the monetary gain at that moment. So I was browsing around, you know, looking at all kinds of different uh, blockchains. I mean, I kind of didn't pay much attention to Bitcoin because at you know the the mainstream narrative there is like it's kind of like a blockchain 1.0 you, you see what i mean it's like mm. a, kind of like the old school you know dinosaur you know, your dinosaur in the room everybody knows about it but it's kind of like a, it has passed its peak and now it's just something you buy in a huddle mm. you, you can you cannot much uh, you cannot do anything about it is you, you buy in huddle. what else you cannot <laughs> currency. So me as a lot of other people, like we just want to get our hands dirty. So we just play with all kinds of other altcoins you can imagine. You know, the uh, Ethereum, EOS, you know, all the, the, the kind of like a, now looking back, it's kind of like a, I'm going in the wrong direction. But at the beginning, I, I think I, I was kind of like caught in the hype like everybody else. Mm -hmm. so trying, going to all this, like the hardest, uh, you know, so-called uh, uh, blockchain 2.0 or 3.0, why not? You know, uh, Ethereum killer and uh, you know all this uh, hype stuff. So, what did you find that was really exciting then? I mean, what what was the transition to BSV? Was it just playing around with Ethereum and then EOS and then actually realizing that you could do more on BSV and that it? I mean, what was that? What was it that made you actually want to use BSV? So in the, the short summer is uh, pretty much I uh, tried everything else and uh, they didn't work. That's how I eventually figured out Bitcoin is, uh, is the ultimate solution here. But it was uh, much longer. It took me like a, I think, yeah, uh, it took me like a year or two to figure out because uh, uh, in 2017, I was like, uh, I, I just feel, because for me, I always want to do my own startup thing, you know, so that's why I, when I was at Facebook, I, I was, you know, working at a day job there, but then I'm always exploring what kind of new things is coming. You know, you have AI, you have autonomous driving, you have blockchain, right? But uh, eventually I kind of feel, okay, this seems the thing to me. It's uh, technically interesting and it's kind of like a, it's very promising, right? Because if you get uh, hyped into, especially the 2017 is like uh, the year of ICO, if you guys still remember. Mm, yeah. yeah. There were so many of them as well, wasn't there? It, it's like suddenly, I think at, the, at that time, the narrative is that we are not controlled or monopolized by the big name VCs, right? Because if you have good ideas, good project, you can just go out there and raise from the crowd, you know, democratize uh, finance or whatever. I think it's probably like, didn't call it DeFi at that time, but it's, uh, that's, that's, I think, appealing to a lot of people because so many people feel like, uh, you know, you have all this uh, internet revolution, right? You have all these apps, all these big tech companies that are making like billions and billions of dollars. But uh, uh, a lot of them is pretty much extracted. I think sometimes people feel like it's unfairly extracted by the early investors, these big VCs. It seems they're just throwing some money and then somehow they're not doing much, right? I mean, you just give people money and then suddenly Zuckerberg built uh, Facebook and now you are like, you're like a, your original $1 million now turns into $10 billion, right? So it, it, so I think a lot of people, they want to reverse this trend, saying like VCS has too much control. 
So I kind of see the philosophy. I think now looking back, it's kind of like a immature. But at that time, I really got into the hype. It's saying, okay, now if you're like an engineer, you're an entrepreneur, now you are more in control because you don't have to just rely on this big name business, right? Sequoia, you know, all these people. So you can, if you, the community believes in this project, and you have the community support. Now they have uh, this tool called ICO. So you can quickly, it's going to explosion for start start work. Hope, hopefully it can accelerate growth. That's, uh, at least that's what I thought uh, back in 2017 and early 2018. Mm -hmm. So what was the idea for your startup then? Oh, I tried like uh, very, quite a few. So the first one, I, I think I, I kind of, if you guys, uh, if you heard about a Quora, the Q and A website. Yes, yeah, of course, it's very big as well, isn't it? Yeah, so people ask big. questions, and, uh, and then other yeah. people. And also, Stack Overflow, right? It's more like a programmer focused Q and A mm. website. So yeah. every, pretty much every developer you said every single day. At least for me, I even I think I still use it every single day. I think Ray yeah. probably you use it. Uh, yeah. I don't know how often, but uh, every night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, every night. So <laughs> copy and paste code samples from there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at that time, I thought as uh, because the the narrative there is uh, you have now you have this cryptocurrency, right? So you are not only uh, if you make contributions, you should be not only be paid in some other f fashion. For example, reputation, right? It's all this like a forum post, like points. You know, it's kind of like a uh, status, but uh, so it's like it's building not, experience yeah. points. Yes, kind of but thing. It's, you're like a posting to Facebook. You are like contributing answers, very high quality answers on Quora or Stack mm. Overflow. But you're not getting paid even one one cent, one penny, right? Mm. So the first yeah. idea I came up with is pretty much why why not just you know if you make a lot of contributions, why not just uh, pay you pretty much in money, right? Crypto. So that's why I try to launch. You can think about like a Quora, but uh, plus uh, monetary reward. So basically, if you have some questions, you can attach a bounty to it. Say, oh, I have now have this bug I cannot fix. You know, I post this. Whoever can solve it, I I give you like I don't know, ten dollars, right? Doesn't matter where you are. So it, it, hopefully, you can incentivize people to give a uh, right, correct, and uh, uh, timely answer, because sometimes I don't want to spend my day, whole day debugging this. If somebody have, just happened mm -hmm. to know the answer, you know, I can. I, I, I would rather pay him, right? So, yeah, and I, was, I mean, so you kind of recognize the value of the time that people were putting into actually helping other people as well. So because time is is, I mean, I always think like time is one of the most precious commodities that you can actually have. So you you are a valuable person who is giving valuable knowledge so therefore like you say the facebook model is free so we all deserve to be paid for our time um so that's a uh, so what what what, what was that called what was yeah. it called did you launch it uh i think i think at that time i called uh you know, what's the name uh, kind of i think it's a cold or something I, that's a long time ago i think i could Quota or something. Yeah, I think it's like quite a quota. Yeah. Is it still up and running? No, no. I think uh, long story short, but uh, uh, you probably heard about the uh, Y Combinator, the the famous uh, like an accelerator incubator, the most famous one. It, it's mm -hmm. where Dropbox, you know, uh, a Coinbase and uh, Airbnb come from. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Like a block dojo, right? Right, yeah, yeah. The okay. most famous one called Y Combinator. Okay. It's the biggest name in Silicon Valley. So it, it, it's almost like a Stanford, but uh, for startup schools. So people just go there and it's like the best. So I just applied and they have two rounds. So I, I get past the first round and then I get go to interview on site. But uh, I think uh, they turned down the idea. Uh, so that's why I didn't. Now I'm not uh, VC backed by Sequoia. <laughs> And then I kind of like a, oh, that's uh, a shame. nothing actually uh, a good thing because otherwise I'd probably be working on BTC or Ethereum or whatnot. Yeah. Because mm, I have yeah. to 
because they probably don't support any PSP project. And you'd be tied to having to what, pay them like a percentage of the company as yes, well. Yes, I think it's a uh, fifteen. I think the last time I've checked, it's a one hundred fifty k for seven percent. I think oh, maybe they changed, that. but uh, that's like a not a good bargain to have. Mm. I mean, that's if you can make it by yourself, yeah. Mm. But in terms of workouts, uh, good, good in the long term. There is an app on BSV that does roughly that, and it's called BitQA.app. Yes, yes. I think it is, it uh, win one of the hackathon. I uh, really like that app, but I don't think they've developed it much, but yeah. Yeah, it was not, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I think, a good idea, but uh, it needs a lot of more, like, a tweeting and, uh, you know, uh, iteration become, for you to become uh, competitive to, let's say, mm -hmm. Aura or Stack Overflow. When you were at Facebook, um, did you have a lot of headhunters? Like, did Google contact you and say, hey, come work for us? Yeah, so that's constantly. That? Like, uh, yeah. whenever it's like uh, the moment you put on Facebook or Google in your profile, LinkedIn, it's all like all, I, I would say every week, but pretty <laughs> much uh, every month, you guys, uh, somebody's reach out to, hey, have you considered this? Consider joining this, that? But uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, very often, I would say. Yeah. Nice position to be in, frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you could keep changing jobs and getting a raise everywhere you went, I suppose. And then they, yeah, yeah. Part of the system. They, they like yeah. jump around, you know, just to get the, 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 the salary bump up. That's uh, almost like uh, one of the quickest ways to get bump. You are not, uh, you don't have to do any real stuff. You just, you know, every. I don't know, a couple of months you can jump around, you know, just so, you know, every six months you'd be headhunted by a different company. So you go to the next company yes, and then yes. your wage would rise and then you'd be headhunted by somebody else. So you go there after six months yes. and then your wage yes. would rise again. I, I mean, that's a pretty cushy, cushy idea. Like uh, imposter syndrome, you know, <laughs> like, your salary is like quadruple. You're thinking, I'm still not got any like, more skills than I had six months ago. Anyway, yeah. not in your case, I'm sure. Um, you're it's, uh, it's a very interesting place. I think if you, even some people, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but some people, it's kind of like going to the extreme. They go there mm -hmm. because when you first join, right, you have a lot of uh, so-called PTOs. You can just take them off. You, you know, you had, for example, you go to a new company, you stay there for like a couple of months, but then you spend one month or two months in, in vacation. But then, but then when you finally join, you are like already planning to go to the next one so <laughs> you're not <laughs> working at all but uh, you're earning so must be hard for them to hang on to employees or it's good ones anyway yeah yeah so how did escrow come about then i think yeah uh so the again a short summary is i tried different things and worked on different blockchains but then eventually decided with bitcoin and that first time right was uh bitcoin cash yeah uh, that was uh uh I had the opportunity, I think it was very coincidentally, I know somebody who, who introduced me to Craig when, when he was doing uh, some uh, conference, you know, in Hong Kong. So that's why I kind of like, you know, become interested because everybody's talking about this uh, fake toshi thing, but uh, mm -hmm. somehow it's, uh, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's very different when you hear somebody constantly on the news, in, on the internet, right? And then somebody, somebody you, you kind of like meet offline and I was just curious to what, what this, all this hype was about around this person. So then kind of like, a, you know, probably everyone, everyone here also did the, you know, once you start looking into it, you, it's like a rabbit hole, right? So, yeah, that, that's you, no you, do you do due diligence yeah. and you, yeah, you definitely go down the rabbit yeah. hole a few times. Yeah, so that's how it came up. I thought, okay, I need to, you know, get into this space. So I, then pretty much, uh, I think for one month or two, I, I pretty much did nothing but just go down the rabbit hole, just doing everything, research about the Bitcoin and also, you know, Craig, that's like researching everything on the internet I can find. And then by the end, I was like, just at, at least in my personal opinion, there's no doubt he's just the guy who created mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. You know, if, uh, if you're like uh, working in some new industry, who 
who do which chain do you choose? For me, that's a no brainer, right? So mm -hmm. because he's the guy who invented this thing. Exactly. He knows everything. You know, I tried a, many other blockchains. It's, none of them work, and this one seems to work, and it's going to continue to work. That's why I, I say I, I got to join this thing. So I, uh, so I heard uh, that's a first coin geek in Hong Kong. So I just drop everything. I just fly out there. You know, I met him, Craig and Ryan. Oh, that was just uh, like uh, people back in the old days. And uh, Roger Ver, Jihan Wu <laughs> in the BCH mm -hmm. days. So uh, when we were still cool so with each other. So that's why I kind of go down the rabbit hole. And then I tried uh, some other things briefly, like try to build some games or even build some uh, mining pool. But uh, it turns out it's not working so well. And uh, and then I kind of like a pivot to, to ask it because, you know, we are talking about uh, Genesis, right? We are trying to re-enable all the old Ocos. Yeah. So Ocos, uh, you, you, you heard about Ocos? Yeah, well, one of the things I, I understand is that people didn't realize that script was actually part of the original Bitcoin yes. coding mm -hmm. language. So yes. I, I'm interested to know why why that got buried why was, was did you think that was part of a misinformation campaign to actually discredit um bsv or some or bitcoin in the first place because it didn't it seems as though a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that script was actually part of that original code yeah because it's, it's almost impossible to know exactly why is that but i kind of feel it's a like a mix of both some of some people that you know, they, they just uh, don't understand it. Uh, they're not aware of it. And some people that know it exists, but uh, they intentionally try to bury it. Mm. So as a mix of both, I think at the beginning when people, there's some pretty much, they just, you know, at the beginning, all the articles are there, pretty much script, right? The mm. full suite of script, Bitcoin script is there. But then in between there's some like, kind of like a security, oh, and uh, people like kind of like a panic and then they're trying to play to be conservative right? so they kind of like a it's like you got a new fancy new toy right and then you play with it it's very powerful and then suddenly i don't know you cut a finger or something and then you freak out and then you kind of mm -hmm. like, you, you, you don't like, want to touch it you you, you you put it uh, you cover it with all all the protective gears you say oh you are not you're only allowed to you know use it for this purpose right mm -hmm. so i, I, yeah. I if Don't break up the transactions. <laughs> yeah, or you can spend anybody's money because if you heard about this uh, so-called op, op return, so basically, mm -hmm. if you if you enable the full cap capability without any like constraint, so you can spend anybody's money with this op return thing. So the short story is they have a bunch of accidents and then kind of people like uh, freak out a little bit. So they say, okay, let's uh, disable them and make sure we understand them fully and if they are safe again we're just bringing them back mm -hmm. but it's like the one megabyte you know cap right block cap so, so once you put in it's kind of settled there for you know inertia or whatnot reason and uh, they, they never brought it back so i know a little bit i mean i'm not a developer and i i, I will say that but i do understand kind of a lot um but explain to us all the possible well not all of them but there are plenty of possibilities with op returns so what kind of things can you write into the op return for example so that so that people understand what an op return is oh op return is uh very simple basically you have a so you have a bitcoin right bitcoin you can think of every bitcoin your bitcoin has a kind of a lock on, onto it mm -hmm. and then only the the owner he has this key right so you usually people call it a Bitcoin key. If it's a lock, if you have the, it's like a house, right? You only, hopefully only you have the keys, you can open it and then you can, you can spend the coins. So op return pretty much says, you know, uh, if I put op return in this lock, this lock is pretty much burned. It's uh, nobody can open it. That's the simplest answer. So if I have this lock, if put op return, that means this house is sealed. Nobody can it's like a security no. function. Yeah, it's kind of like a kind of like a self-destroyed thing. You know, you, you put this locking, 
lock on, nobody can lock it. Nobody can unlock it forever. So, so, learned, are, oh, mm -hmm. sorry. so like with uh, that's with BTCs because I learned that um, that part is trashed afterwards. Um, I don't yeah. know what part that was. But yeah, it gets like just thrown away. Pretty much, it's like uh, you're. That's why usually you don't uh, uh, lock real real Bitcoin. You you the amount of Bitcoin for all of return. I mean, at least in the old days, it's zero because any any amount you put there is burned. You don't. I mean, people usually don't burn the money. So, so it's uh, mostly for attaching some other piece of data. Because yeah. BTC land, right? They usually think, oh, we only use Bitcoin as payment. Mm. And then somebody will come up with, hey, I want to put some data there, right? Mm. For example, you want to, you know, hash some documents to prove its existence, right? So they say, oh, you just use this hack called the operator. Pretty much you are not doing payment, but uh, you can attach any data. Mm. But only for this amount, 80 bytes or something. Yeah. It's very, very mm. limited. But now, is that always get? I mean, does is that always going to be limited to that amount for an op return, or is that that will that be? I mean, that well, I mean, they they don't have a lockdown uh, protocol, right? So whenever the developers or the community or the consensus, right, decide they want to bump it, they can they can always do it. Yeah. Okay. So that's no for them. Is that's no? They can change it if they want. Is that a big fight between like developers on? You know, like compared to the miner side, mm -hmm. because I am assuming like the miners have to also have like approval of. Um, I don't know. I guess there's a standard, but I haven't really read into that part too much. Uh, but it sounds like there can be a lot of like confusion with, uh, you know, working with miners and then also trying to add something new that you know could be um, very useful. Yeah, I think. Uh... In theory, that uh, the miners also is part of the BTC community and they have a voice. But uh, as we, we in BSV people, uh, space, you know, like usually there's uh, the it's the developers who's making the final call because they control the like a rebel. So you know you can all it's like the old saying, right? You know, it's uh, doesn't matter who vote, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. people who, who who count the votes. That it's pretty much that mm -hmm. what happens in BTC land. I mean, officially. You know, everybody in the community have a say, but uh, you know, it's pretty much like Greg Maxwell and a few developers. They they have the final say. So, but, is this the, the pruning of the data that they talk about? Yes, yes. They call it, uh, you know, uh, per, basically it's a uh, provably unspent, right? Because it's not in the UTXO set. So you can you can I mean, if you want to delete save, it. you can you can delete yeah. it if you want. But luckily for us, we don't have this all this uh, kind of like artificial limits, you know, 80 bytes or whatnot, 40 bytes. So, so that's why I see this uh, like an opportunity, right? And because we are going to re -en enable all this opcode again. But the problem is, I think Ray, you are a developer, right? So, you, you, if you have a choice, you have either a high level language like a JavaScript or Python, or you can work with some kind of like a machine code, like a script. Which mm -hmm. one do you prefer to? Probably Python. <laughs> yeah, see? So. Yeah, because we, we um, actually, I think I asked maybe you or somebody else about, had some questions about S script. And um, my uh, my partner was talking about how, like, this looks like machine code <laughs> or yeah. you know, something very, very complicated, but it, yeah, it is but machine it, code. But it's also very, you know, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it, it is fascinating, but it's kind of a low level. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, you, you so want like to, hex. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's good for machine to, to read, mm -hmm. but not much for human, for developers, yeah, regular users. So that's what all the modern languages come into play. So basically, at the very beginning, right, when computers first come up, also you only have machine language, right? And then, I mean, even before that, you can you only can code it in zero ones, zero ones, right? And then mm -hmm. people come up with assembly, which you can kind of read it, you can add, you can subtract, right? You don't have to write zero one zero one. It's almost impossible to, to to code. So and then people then take it another level. Say, oh, why not we have some more, you know, human readable language on top of that, like C or Java. Or then later on you have a JavaScript or Python. It's the same story here, 
but we know that we have a very powerful machine. But uh, you need some uh, more abstract tools for other people to easily play with it. Uh, it's like a computer, right? I mean, it's all zero and one, zero and one, but <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, it's not easy to have this show. Uh, right? Chipperish, yeah. yeah. It's like only zero, zero. I mean, the underlying, if we get on the, look at the cable level, you know, it's all zero and zero, but nobody, it's not user friendly. So we need some kind of developer tool to compete with other blockchains. So that's where the idea of S script come to be. Okay. So okay. we have Genesis, we have all the opcode enabled Bitcoin script, but there's no developer friendly tools. So I want to develop this tool so more people can easily program Bitcoin machine. Yeah. So you've been teaching people as well. So you've been writing this in Medium articles and then you started, is that where you started Bitcoin, like Bitcoin class with Satoshi or is that something that came later? It, that thing came later and it was like a coincidence. So when, I've, when we've, uh, so about two month, two years ago, we first, meet, we launched the first uh, version of uh, S script in terms of, there's a developer tool called, uh, developers usually write programs in a tool called IDE. I think Ray, you probably know, right? So you use IDE. So it's like a, a software tool. You, 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 you pretty much develop your programming. So you can write it, you can test it, you can debug it. It's like a, you have a full, full workflow for any like a modern developers. So we, we released that about two years ago in CoinGeek, London. Yeah, you know, I saw that. Yeah. Before the world shut down, you know, we kind of mm -hmm. had a great party. But it's kind of like an end of the world party. It was, it was, yeah. yeah. So we released that. And then afterwards, I thought, okay, so we have this thing, very powerful. I think it is the most powerful machine, you know, blockchain in the world, but people don't know how to play with it. I mean, mm -hmm. Craig has all the good ideas, but mm -hmm. he's kind of like a, you know, visionary, you know, architect kind of guy. But is not easy to follow. So I, I want to be something, uh, you know, you want to be, you know, well, yeah. yeah. so I want very high level. So he's, I want to be something kind of like a bridge between him and, uh, you know, a uh, lot of other developers. So that's, that's why I decided to, you know, to teach people, to educate people how to use this tool. So that's why I did a bunch of uh, initiatives. First, we have the, uh, medium blog post. I think now we have about, I haven't checked the latest, but I think maybe 80 or 90 articles. So it's as a uh, rich set and it's a free for everybody to, to read. And they also come with coding examples. It's okay. not only the theoretical, most of them is some working code you can try and play yourself. So that's the first in initiative coming after CoinGeek. We release it. And then uh, I think for, for Craig, uh, because I always follow the theory of Bitcoin, right? And Ryan, you know, before he moved to, mm -hmm. moved, he was also in my neighborhood. So we kind of like, uh, sometimes just uh, hang out together. And he said, hey, you want, you, want to, you want to join sometime? It's like this show. So he kind of invited me. But then for, I think for various reasons, he kind of want to, you know, take a break from Bitcoin for some time. Then, I'm like a little bit like uh, Gavin and Dresden, if you know. It's mm -hmm. like uh, I didn't volunteer for it, but he, he so it's kind of just stole it upon me. <laughs> hey, here we go. You like, understand this. You can go with it. You can <laughs> make it work. Like, you run with it. Okay. I, yeah. I kind of like, uh, feel this is, you know, both as a privilege, but also this is like something surprise because mm -hmm. I didn't sign up for this. But and then I, I have to keep this going. That's why we kind of like branch it off as a. Uh, Bitcoin class with Satoshi. So, so we also basically is a continuation of uh, theory, theory of Bitcoin, but mm. it's a more, more like a focus on uh, practice or applications. More can, like can I um, break it down a bit? So it strikes me that you're kind of almost writing templates for people to perform certain types of actions. Is that, would that be fair to say? Things that they can kind of pick up and use and apply in their own software mm -hmm. that they're writing. Um, so yeah. you're writing this example code. So Craig came up with all these different transaction types. 
that. Yes. I've heard him say this a few times. He tried yeah. to think of every possible transaction type that somebody would want and kind of created them all up front. How does how does their script fit in with that? Are you are you just then turning them into actual kind of bits of code, or what's what's their script's role versus the transaction mm -hmm. types? So transaction types, if you know about transaction, I think at the high level, right? You have inputs, you have outputs, right? Mm -hmm. Inputs is basically all the coins are in the outputs and the inputs specify which out points, which output you are spending. Right? That's high level how it works. And if you look at what's inside the inputs and outputs, I mean, you have some other field like a version number or lock time or like transaction ID, but most, most of the part is is Bitcoin script, you know. In the output, you have locking script. Basically, it's a lock, right? So mm -hmm. in, the un in the inputs, you have keys on how to unlock them. So it's called unlocking script. So different transaction template, like uh, Quacks mentioned about, I think is meaning, oh, because this is only a standard, like a package, right? But what's inside is uh, you, you can do anything, right? It's like you receive a package, the, the content inside it can be anything, right? It can be a candle, a book, anything. But then how do you, how do you uh, leverage, how do you manipulate the content to satisfy the lead of your application, right? For example, if you're like an online book bookstore, right? You want to have, oh, this is book. And if you want to sell some clothes online, you say, oh, this is a dress or something. But then the language that then specify it it's called Bitcoin script, right? So that's how I see the transaction template and the script. That's, that's so it. you're defining what the object is and yes. what the parameters yes. are and relations. Yeah, all the business yeah. logic. Yeah. Does this make sense? Yeah. When you say uh, Bitcoin script, is that um, like JSON? Or I guess I'm, maybe, I mis uh, maybe I misheard that part. Uh, um, Bitcoin script is uh, its own format. Right? Okay, but that's usually okay. when you, I think when you say JSON is probably because when you go to Block Explorer, when you, you know, deserialize your parts, mm -hmm. your action, you see it's in JSON. It's JSON. Yeah. 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 Called a Bitcoin script. Called a script. Yes. It, it, it's a UI thing. Yeah. You can be in JSON. It's displayed. Very, yeah. It can be anything. How you display it? How you display it? It seems it strikes me when I read your medium articles, which I, I do. I don't always watch the videos, I've got to admit, but I do read the medium articles. But it seems like you're solving a logic puzzle each time. Yeah. Pretty much, yes. Because yeah. uh, you talk about transaction templates, right? So mm -hmm. I think most of the time it's like one article, I kind of like one, like a template. For example, you can do this. Uh, um, let's say uh, outsource computation, right? Or you can do this uh, own, own chain game, right? tic-tac-toe, right? Or game of life, or even Turing machine, right? So each article is pretty much like what kind of template you can have. So hopefully the best outcome is for other people, developers, you know, they come, oh, you can do this. What kind of applications can I build using this technique? Mm. So for me, I'm like, a, it's one level, it's uh, kind of like between Crack and all the, the application developers because I can show Crack has some big visions and then I kind of feel like, okay, this is how it works, like a prototype, a demo, but it's not full production, but it's also not like a, some abstract theoretical paper. Right, right. So, so you're tying his what's yeah. possible into what's real. Yeah. Yes. And kind but of it's, tying it's kind of, it's kind of not as theoretical, but it's not, not something yeah. you can just directly copy. It's and not like run. a finished product. You've yeah, then you got to, to work with it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I mean, have you ever written a language before? Or is this your first time? Uh, good question. I think uh, coincidentally, uh, when I was doing my undergrad in computer science, and uh, we have to do like a kind of like a thesis for the mm -hmm for the uh, bachelor degree, and uh, I happened to design a compiler for another language, similar to Pascal. Mm -hmm. You heard about this Pascal yeah. language? Kind of like an old school thing. I, I learned it at uni, actually. I'm that old. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a, like a dinosaur language, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> that's about right. 
I don't think uh, kids these days uh, learn it. At no, no, it's very passe. So yeah. this is, uh, you can say, this is my second language. So hopefully, <laughs> can, that I, my goal is to make this like a JavaScript to the web developer man. Mm -hmm. I oh, want right. to make a script to smart contract development. I mean, across mm -hmm. all blockchain space, because eventually, if we are right, right, so the Bitcoin is the only blockchain that's that can sustain in long term. It's like different, uh, you know, networking protocols, you know, competing in their 90s or 80s or whatnot. And then eventually only internet emerge. Right? We only have one internet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so then you, on my internet, we have browsers, and then the standard is JavaScript, right? Yeah. So I want to make sure when we all converge into Bitcoin, the standard hopefully is script or some uh, even better language, but also running on Bitcoin. And what would you need to do to it to make an interface with JavaScript and HTML? Is there any? Oh, it's, uh, it's it's kind of like a parallel because uh, Bitcoin doesn't understand the JavaScript. It's like uh, the browser, right? It doesn't yeah. understand Bitcoin script. That's fine because they are, they are designed for their own purposes. One is only for web developer development. The other one is for so called smart contract. But they can interoperable because usually when that's where the SDK come into play. Mm -hmm. Basically, now you have Bitcoin script. And then you can use all kind of other language to integrate this into your application, right? That's what we call SDK in programming mm -hmm. uh, world. So we have different SDKs for all the major languages. We have JavaScript, we have Python, we have uh, Go. I think a maybe later we can have also have Java or any bindings you can. So developers, they don't have to understand the internals. So whatever language they prefer they to use, they can use our SDK and they to to integrate a script uh, script into the applications. Because for end users, they, they, they would never use, they would never touch. They don't know what's going on underneath. We, we kind of wrap around even, so a script, and then we have SDKs, it's like another wrapper around. So people don't have to write their own, let's say, uh, serializing JSON and then parse it out. We, we do handle all the, the common functionality so they don't have to do. You're doing a lot of the, the heavy work. Yes. You know, like, and hopefully, see, <laughs> I, I, uh, I always hear about S-Script. Um, it seems uh, important for NFTs also. Yeah, um, you can, you can. Do, do, do you have a lot of people asking you to like, to tailor, mm -hmm. you know, to a yes. certain project? Yes, and uh, we, we release a, a few examples of MFTs. How do you do it? You know, in uh, different ways, you have a different trade offs. And here's a good thing that, I mean, at the beginning, I think because we are all pushing the, you know, the envelope, we don't know what the boundary can be. So uh, I'm like, a, we're kind of like leading this effort. And the, the good thing is, people come here. It's all, it's just some language, program language, like a JavaScript. So that if they have them spe special needs that, that the, the, the code we release cannot do, they can just change it themselves because it's just code, right? So yeah. they don't have to rely on us. So that's the best outcome for other people to come in and start play with it themselves. Mm. And it, because the tool is all open source, right? So they can just go and grab it and then do whatever they want. And that's what actually happened. Right. So uh, we released about the ID, so-called ID, two, about two years ago. We have about 3,000 downloads of today. So nice. so I think that's pretty much every developer in, in, uh, in, in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So pretty much. So is that that would be all the, the people as well? I mean, is that how many students you've been teaching as well? I mean, everybody that's learning off you is kind of one of your students in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of think about that as, a, again, as like a bridge. I'm like a student of Craig and a lot of other people, you know, in the BSV space. So I can gather them and then try to reach out to more people, branch out. So we, we did have a few like initiative, collaborative uh, uh, F project with some like uh, schools, for example, with uh, you know Jack, you know 
Jack Rogers from Exeter yes. uh, University. Yes. Uh, we also talked with, uh, I think, Robin. Um, maybe we can see see her later. But he connects me with uh, some Duke University professor, Jeremy. Oh, so this was quite. This is quite recently as well. Really. Yeah, Robin, that's yeah. like uh, maybe one week or two weeks ago. I yeah. Think Robin is uh, heavily involved with Duke University, isn't she, in Miami at the moment? Because mm -hmm. she's yes. just joined the Bitcoin Association, hasn't she? So. But that's awesome. So are they going to start teaching S script in universities courses, mm -hmm. do you yes. think? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's, awesome. a, that's, that's yeah. a really great thing. That's phenomenal. Well done yeah. on that. Seriously, mm -hmm. well done. Yeah. Uh, hopefully that's uh, the, the earlier the school adopts this Bitcoin so they can, they can go in the right direction because mm. nowadays, you know, even Duke, the, the professor said, he's saying, you know, most of them is teaching you know, Ethereum, Solidity, but it's a dead end, right? Because it doesn't scale. Mm. So it's fundamentally, it's not doesn't scale, but it's just that the market has not uh, reflect the reality yet. So like uh, the students, you know, they, 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 they kind of like uh, don't know what's going on. So they are almost, uh, I would say, they spend a lot of time that probably going to be better spent if they just go into Bitcoin and uh, a script in particular. So. Yeah, because it's, it's a lot of time to spend learning something that actually doesn't work. And now so, imagine yeah. you pretty much spend your whole career, right? That's what all the blockchains and throw billions. Gosh, yeah, I mean, kind of that's good. And when you realize as well, I mean, how frustrating must that be that you've spent so much time learning something that literally isn't going to scale, isn't going to work, and actually now you need to learn a whole new thing all over again because you've just wasted all of that time wow yeah it's yeah once you have to realize that that's kind of like a eureka moment where first mm. uh, i got the sense okay uh i think i'm kind of lucky because i only waste like a, a year or so because mm -hmm. i tried different things and then i'm fortunate enough to to went down the bitcoin rabbit hole it mm. me a lot of time i think now we are like kind of slowish because we don't have the hive and everything, but that's what, if you actually build tangible stuff, that's what actually happens, right? Yeah, and there's a saying, slow and steady wins the race, mm -hmm. instead yes. of move so, fast and break things. Yes, I, I think it's all like overnight success, right? It's the, that's not a thing. Because not need, no. You can slow and... somebody's uh, pumping and uh, trying to dump on you, so that's how you... <laughs> so yeah. I, I think I'm patient, so I think it's a long-term fight. It's just uh, funny to watch all the, you know, they have a BTC conference right now. So in Miami, mm -hmm. all the hype, right? So all the mm -hmm. media attention, all the celebrities, you know, Peter Thiel, you know, Jack Dorsey, everybody you can think of. Yeah, because these are people with big influence followings and big yes. voices. And this is one of the things I find highly frustrating is that, you know, you do have the, the influence, but you're influencing people in literally the wrong way and um, you know I, I do personally find that frustrating are you going to dubai for coin geek this year oh yes yes i just uh uh i, I think i'll be speaking there so i'm uh, very excited to to go there after missing coin geek for the last two years so, mm. yeah so you yeah, you, yeah you didn't go to new york um yeah. virtually oh virtually. Okay. i will be yeah. there virtually and, and in spirit um okay. yeah but after i've um i mean one thing i'm quite grateful for is um after dubai that coin geek will be permanently based in london yeah that's what i heard is, is, is it yeah. true is it permanent yeah. thing well that? that that came from kelv kelv yes. did that out so i'm assuming that that is going to be 100 percent set in stone um but it will be <laughs> a, the permanent home for coin geek cool for us. Will, be, will be in yeah. yeah will be in london i mean for me it's literally a three and a half hour coach ride or an hour and a half on a train so it's it's quite easy yes. to get to so that that's call for everyone who's based over here and hopefully jack rogers and his 640 students at exeter university as well will be able to manage to get there because i think that's um i think that's quite a good thing that you're doing um with respect to the university side of things as we just discussed because at least they are going to get the correct 
the correct education and they will be leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else how can people find you shall we because we know you've got a medium article so what i will do is i will put the descript the medium article in the description box here and you've also got your youtube channel haven't you yes but uh, yeah everything you can find uh, about the script go to script.io that's mm -hmm. uh, our official website you can find all the you know social media and also if you're a developer please join our slack i think ray joined recently right so so that's all the pretty much the most uh, what is the slack called that's uh, good. Yeah. Oh, is it right? Yeah, it's just go to askwood.io and go to the bottom. There's a select link. Click, and it's free. So, awesome. Yeah, I think today it's about uh, 400 people. So I think now it's oh, the biggest. Good. I think there's the biggest uh, developer oriented uh, uh, Slack channel. I think. We're well, very place. lucky to have you, doing so. I mean, uh, I assume there's no money specifically in developing this language i mean you you must be doing this sort of fairly altruistically uh yeah. no. no 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 i'm not like a socialist i'm not like a capitalist i do this <laughs> of course not for uh i mean it's uh, of course my it's my interest but also i'm trying to develop into a sustainable successful business because mm -hmm. I think that's more uh convincing in the long term because you know, the best thing we want to help is, you know, somebody use our tools. They build a billion dollar company yeah. of a BSV. And, uh, you know, then you have a huge effect on the developer community, right? Because I think one, if not the most important reason why so many developers, they flock to Ethereum or Sonata or Tron, because they see somebody, you know, kind of like at the peers, they just tinker with it, and then they develop something and then Suddenly, they are worth like uh, millions or tens yeah. of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I think almost like overnight, right? So to them, I mean, we can just say whether this is legit or not. Probably most of them is not legit at this moment. But if, mm -hmm. imagine somebody build like Airbnb or Quora, right? You know, or anything mm -hmm. that's a legit business using, you know, script or a BSV technology, Bitcoin technology. Right? Then that would be like, I think that would be like a killer app. That mm -hmm. make Hmm. Well, the, I went to the Block Dojo yesterday in London and they were presenting, there was uh, six or seven uh, businesses there, the startup businesses that were presenting. So, um, and some of those ideas uh, are really, really clever ideas as well and, and very much needed as well. So the Block Dojo did say that they are going to be trying to get over into the States. So something like the Block Dojo for BSV in the states would actually be a really good and positive thing mm -hmm. um i mean do you know of any any people yourselves that are looking for um backing and and funding from investors at the moment that are in the bsv space that they're looking for right? yeah for, for, I mean, people that you know personally i mean there are lots of people in your slack startups yeah doing startups i assume yes yeah. yes i i think mm -hmm. that I know quite a few of them are in the Slack, but also know, uh, I heard uh, Block Dojo, they are going to expand uh, internationally. I mm. think uh, Interesting. about uh, going to Florida. That's what I heard about mm. all the yes. Citadel in Southern Florida, you know, Kurt and Robin, they're talking about. And also we're trying to establish something kind of like a, I think it's kind of like a funny thing to watch the, you, you probably heard about the T38. I think he's always trying to, mm -hmm. You know, pitch about uh, we have a, you know, West Coast, you know, Citadel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, would, do you want to explain what the West Coast Citadel is for people? I, I think it's kind of like a, I don't think it's an actual, you know, physical thing. It, it's just, uh, I think a T38 and uh, Kurt and they're trying to, you know, like a, some kind of like a friendly beaching against each other. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, is, I think they're like, establishing Florida. some offices as well, aren't they? So that so, people can go in and. Well, he's trying to yeah. get, uh, because he's based in Arizona. So also, there's a few companies in the BSV space, like uh, S Script, built by gamers, and uh, Thai. We're kind of in the West Coast. So we're trying mm -hmm. to say, okay, you know, you have Florida, you know, in the East Coast, but we also have a huge presence in the 
Western in the West Coast as well. I mean, Arizona is not uh, coastal, but uh, it's kind of like a similar region. So we, it's kind of like a meme thing. I, I don't yeah. think it's, uh, <laughs> it's real yet. So still okay. some pretty big business, uh, distances when you're talking about America, the difference between California and Arizona is a long way, isn't it? But yeah. yeah. It's pretty much like uh, London to Moscow, something, or even <laughs> something yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, definitely it's, a plane ride. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to um, Florida? Florida? Oh yeah, a uh, few times. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the last uh, kind of like a, they have a before coin geek. There's a BSC conference. I, you know, I went there. Cool. And then before that, I was just went there in the winter for a vacation. Yeah. I was in. Uh, <laughs> I was doing my grad school. I was uh, in Michigan actually. So uh, right uh, across Ohio, Toledo, yeah. uh, just is next door. We have, uh, uh, I mean, Detroit. Uh, so yeah. you're cold. You actually went to Arizona State University to no, see Craig uh, there, didn't you? Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. And Not for Arizona State, you know, so he was in some other, like, uh, I think it's called a Grand Canyon. It's like a... Kind of like a community college there. I've never heard about it until he told me. So <laughs> that's when I went to visit the West Coast Citadel. Right. The right. middle of a desert. It's kind of like a secret. Uh, they just go and shoot guns, don't they? As far as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. That it's was a, a experience. It's a beautiful place, though, Arizona. Yes. I would love that. I want to go there. I want to go back mm. to Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, just go, don't go there in the summer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, it's same for Florida. I think I went there in, in June. It was like, uh, okay, that's not my thing. It's like yeah. uh, 40, uh, like 100. Uh, yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> too hot. So yeah. yeah, I do definitely you, like the cold climate. <laughs> do you have like an idea of what a killer app? would be on BSV because some people have asked me this mm -hmm. um, recently what do you think the killer app would be what would you say it would be okay so the short answer is no because otherwise <laughs> no people it right now so uh, but I think about it uh, the way so it's like uh, any other new technology right it's like an internet or mobile phone so when it first came out I think a lot of people were tinkering it. We got a feeling it's something revolutionary, but we don't know exactly. I don't think when people first go online, they will say, oh, we, maybe one day we can build a, you know, the uh, live chat or Zoom or Facebook, right? Nobody knows because otherwise mm -hmm. they would be building, right? And also also for like a mobile phones, right? When iPhone came out, I think a lot of people say, oh, this, this feels like a future, but mm -hmm. exactly how is this? What kind of apps you, you're going to be the killer apps? Nobody, nobody can. I don't think people know it's going to be like an Instagram or, you know, Angry Bird, right? Because after I think the killer app is such that when once it came out, everybody thinks, oh, of course, this this is, hmm. of course, of course, you want to take out your phone and take a snap, Snapchat and a snapshot and then put hmm. it on Instagram, right? Because you don't want oh. to carry out carry your laptop, and that's not. Yeah, Good. I mean it's perfect for like a mobile phone and also the GPS. Right? I think it would be similar trajectory. You have the potential. You know the the uh, big pieces are here, and people are not tinkering. And once it came out, people said, "Oh, why didn't I came up with a, mm. such a simple idea?" But before, that's that's, a, that's how you know it's a killer. So once it came out, everybody know, "Oh, this is a stupid idea. Why didn't mm -hmm. I come up with it?" But right before that. I think nobody would know. I, I, I don't know. But uh, what I can do is I provide all the toolings, you know, infrastructure, so people can tinker with it. So that's how it uh, came out to be. It's not, uh, it, it probably will not uh, come, you know, we are all sitting at our home, we think, and we meditate, and then one day we are like, a, you know, you recap, yeah, yeah. we just do it. It's probably where you have to try different things, you know, tinker with it, you build some games, you know, you, you do some kind of, like a, you know, outsource computation, you do some kind of like a tokens, you do some kind of like logistics uh, supply chain, you do some kind of IoT, and then you play with it. And then it, 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 it will be like a, like a how almost like Edison invent the light bulbs. It, it, it's not going to be like a straight route. I think it will be mm -hmm. like, that's, that's 
to me that I think that's all the big revolutions uh, come to be technology. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you think of it, you said about mobile phones and Edison, I mean, a mobile phone in, like in 1973 was kind of like a brick that you carried around with you. And it was really big with an aerial sticking out. And I mean, these were quite heavy as well. And now literally we just have something this size, which is actually more powerful than the computer that sent man to the moon in the first place so yeah. when you you consider that kind of technology and how i mean the, the computers as well there at that point in time i mean they they filled rooms didn't they for servers and everything as well so when you consider you've got this walking around in your pocket yeah you know but that's took what nearly 50 years to get to that point mm -hmm. but isn't that the same so with the underlying kind of way that the internet is built as well this is where it is really really old technology and that's why it needs to be sort of modernized there needs to be a new protocol for it and it needs to be more efficient because it's quite leaky and you know we get like you say you get taken down rabbit holes that you really don't want to get taken down so i see um bitcoin as being a safer way to be actually able to navigate around the internet as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a next evolution of uh, internet. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, I I, I think. Uh, well, before I do pivot into uh, back into Bitcoin, I was kind of like at that one moment. I think I almost have a, like a identity crisis because you know I left my luxury job at Facebook, mm -hmm. and you know, all my colleagues think I'm crazy, and then I have to, and then I get into this kind of like a hype industry, and mm -hmm. it turns out to be all like a Sham, it's like a waste yeah. of time. So but then I noticed, okay, Bitcoin is actually much bigger than just, you know, ICO and all this hype thing. It's going to be, you know, enable the new type of commerce over the internet. And also with a smart contract capability. Basically it means, I mean, kind of like a fancy word, but the way I think about it is very simple. It, it's uh, pretty much a make a, a trust, the, the cost, cost less because you know, you always have the problem when you do commerce over the internet, right? If Alice wants to buy something from Bob and he want, she wants to pay in Bitcoin, if she pays Bitcoin, Bob will not send the goods, right? Vice versa. Right? If Bob sends the goods first, and Alice may not pay, pay him. Right? Yeah. The contract and the Bitcoin is it's almost like a judiciary car that's not, mm -hmm. not be corrupted. And so you put money there, the goods go one way, and the payment goes the other way. It will happen so-called atomically, right? You, you don't, so you don't need trust. You can remove a lot of thing application. When you remove trust, you can do a lot of, uh, you can do more type of transactions, right? And it, well, you know what the killer app would be with this, thinking about it, is what you were saying the other day, Diddy taxes paying taxes oh yeah i know i think if you could actually uh, pay your tax at the point of of purchase or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly that would be that'd be, that'd be phenomenal i think everybody would see the point of that they? yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's just one yeah even mm -hmm. for even when we think about it even for that that's big right and that's mm -hmm. only one like one application nothing mm -hmm. about that impact times mm -hmm. i don't know one thousand one million times right it, it's uh, it's just literally unbounded. It's only limited by our imagination. Imaginations, yeah, completely. Yes, so. and, and to be fair, I mean, your imagination can take you to very, uh, you know, some amazing places. So you say, I mean, yeah. I think some t somewhere along the line, recently in the last couple of years, people have been afraid to kind of open their imaginations up, or at least believe in their own their own imaginations, and have been relying too much on what other people have been telling them how to act and how to react and things so it is a i think being able to you know convince people that actually using your imagination and you and, and intuition is real um is something that has been forgotten i think in the last couple of years especially when it comes to technology i use i spend a lot of time outside i love the countryside and i always feel a bit more intuitive when I've spent more time outside, but I do feel that if I spend too much time in front of a computer, that I kind of lose a little bit of my intuition because the algorithms 
mm-hmm. they're kind of trying to think for yeah. you yeah, um, yeah. and they don't always get it right and I sometimes it's like I know the algorithm is trying the algorithm has took me here and it's took me there and it's like I yeah. don't actually I wouldn't even go there if it wasn't for the algorithm so it's um I mean, how how do you because you said about AI earlier as well so what's the what is it that kind of gets your passion going when it comes to AI how do you see those applications I think that's another topic I think that I've been learning a lot from Craig because if you're in the valley right Silicon Valley it's almost oh AI the, the machine is going to take over the humans it's a religion well yeah, yeah I mean like well, what, yeah, yeah one thing so, um it on, is it's like a tool, right? It's like a AI. Yeah, it's almost like a, my car, my mm. cell phone, right? My mobile phone. It's good at something, but it's not. A, it doesn't have an agency. You, you see what I mean? It's right. not. A, I think a it's human. Soul, it's is, soulless. There's no soul yeah. to AI. So, for example, music. Okay, so there's applications like Google invented um, that actually, you know, human beings. Yeah, if you're a musician, if you like music, you like to pick up an instrument, you like to play the instrument, you like to experiment with music. But when a computer comes along and, and Google have invented this just AI that like makes tunes and stuff, that it's it's okay, but there seems to be something lacking in the actual music itself. There's, there doesn't seem to be any kind of soul within it's the same that. with the AI art, I think. It, it can be very yeah. clever, but at, at the end of the day, it you can feel that there's something missing from it, definitely. Mm. Yeah. And I think that it's a human element. A point. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of feel it's like a false dichotomy. It, it's not that you have mm. to choose between human and machines. It's like what Craig is saying is uh, pretty much they they work together. That's mm. that's not better. It's mm-hmm. like machines to me is like a, it's good, very good at some like simple task, doing it repeatedly, and like mm-hmm. doing add two numbers. So you can add like a billion times. I don't think uh, even Craig can. Even mm-hmm. crack do that, right? So, so but we humans we are good at uh, coming with uh, coming up with uh, new ideas. Mm. I think that's why I like uh, you know whenever I have new ideas, uh, I, I immediately release them in articles, videos. Just let the world know because other people, it's it's the the good thing is uh, you know ideas once once you have uh, broadcast it, other people can take it. They can they can come mm. with new ideas upon. Build a point, right? So mm-hmm. as I, I think I'm also 100 percent with you. Just uh, for me, it's very hard to come up with uh, new ideas when I'm uh, staring at the screen all day long. For yeah. me, yeah, I, I like my neighborhood because it's kind of like a, it's not in the city, so you have mountains. You have uh, I think five minutes away from me is mountains, and then ten minutes is the bay, and then thirty minutes is the Pacific Ocean. So I think uh, for my time, a lot of time I spend just walking around. And, and that's it's so much inspiration from nature, inspiring yeah, just, views. Uh, coming me down, and uh, because I'm, I'm, we are all in this kind of a cre- creative industry, so it's not like a we're in a, like an assembly line. We're just putting this nail and using this hammer, but then that's probably not good, very efficient to walk around all day long, right? So you have to stay in this assembly line and just you know hammer this nail all day long. So we are like you have. To, when you are like uh, in some kind of creative industry, I, I kind of find it, it's just my personal feeling as if I, you put me in something like a London or New York City offices all day long, it's, it's just, uh, I kind of feel stressed to be frank. Yeah. So yeah. I want, would be rather be in the nature and walk around. You know, that's where I find that most of my ideas uh, come from. I when, think having a dog is so wonderful. Like whenever I get stuck, you know, if you take the dog for a walk, walk generally yes. speaking just that taking your attention away from it for a bit can mm-hmm. you know let the the idea of the or the solution or whatever percolate mm-hmm. yeah that's why i kind of feel uh for me a lot of people especially when they work in some uh, big tech companies they're like uh, they, they kind of like uh i don't know a lot of them they, they prefer to you know to stay in front of computers just do everything there you know working you know, watching movies and uh, play games, browsing the internet. Yeah, for me, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, uh, f- sometimes I just want to get away from the computer and uh, talk mm. to people. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think about GPT-3? Because um, 
like do you think that it will get to a point where it's as you know that it is as well, powerful as a human test. that yeah, yeah. That is a human brain do you think it's on the way to yeah, there I, or do you think that's I, like I, a fallacy i'm i'm like uh, in this uh I'm not expert so i'm like a uh, delegated to <laughs> to crack but for him uh, and for us it's always you know it, it's very similar to the crypto space right crypto space i think is a uh, microcosmos of the big society you know mm -hmm. you know when you get into crypto right if you just uh, look at that what's over the internet the mainstream media you get one narrative right but then when you do your own research you find oh this is almost uh, the opposite of what whatever you are being told i think for gpt3 my personal i haven't done my own research but uh, crack has been tinkering with it uh, i think it's not as impressive as uh, what the, the the news is claiming so this this probably is this it's kind of thing. Like a BDC thing. Yeah, so it's like you are in this little bubble, and because you're constantly working on a screen within this little bubble, like you say about you know Facebook, you're working all day in front of a screen. Then your leisure time is spent like playing games on a screen, oh, or, Netflix, sure. or you go and watch a film which is on a screen. So you are you are constantly in this bubble of being sucked into a, a kind of non-reality. So yeah, so therefore maybe yeah, it, it's probably. You, you, in, unless you pull away from it, and like you say, you go out to to nature, you go and climb a mountain, and you and you kind of have a look around you and see how awe inspiring nature is, then then maybe that's why why you say that they kind of probably think that these things are actually um, more ahead of the time than they actually are. I mean, GPT four to actually be e equal to a f human brain has i feel quite a long way to go but i do think that it's quite a scary concept to think that maybe actually gpt4 could could actually be you know on the scale of a of a human human form because one, once it gets to human form processing if it ever gets to human form processing, which i know craig doesn't think it will get to i think that could be very dangerous for humanity is this yeah. like a supercomputer Say again. Is this a supercomputer? Like a kind of like AI. AI thing. The best yeah, AI. AI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm only behind. <laughs> yeah, you are still. I'm still at uh, GPT three. So yeah, it's already. Okay. Uh, so that's my personal thing. I haven't done much research into it. So take this with a grain of salt. I think it's a. Uh, they will always coexist. I think a machine is good at something. Mm -hmm. and yeah, not good. It's like uh, I don't think a machine is going to. Uh, you know, come up with some kind of a new science or uh, algorithm or patterns. Yeah. Any yeah. I think well, develop a sense I, of humor. Develop a sense of humor. Well, mm -hmm. the, 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 actually, this is where GPT three has actually got a sense of humor. There are a couple of interviews that GPT three has done with humans on on YouTube, and it's a free. They've they've literally done a three D kind of um, avatar for GPT three to talk through, but he's got a very very dry and wicked sense of humor. Um, so if you do get a chance to to watch, I, I mean, I might put a link in in, in the description okay. as well because it is uh, it was amusing very amusing but he's got a very naughty sense of humor and if you let gpt3 with that kind of humor out onto the internet it's very satire -y. so people are not going to understand like some people might get sucked into thinking well this is actually real when it's actually just a, a satirical joke that gpt3 has come up with because it under it's kind of got to this point where it understands stuff how humans interact on the internet but interacting on the internet like you say is not the same as interacting in real life um so yeah i mean I've, I've watched quite a few interviews with gpt3 and i'm like whoa <laughs> okay it's like a naughty a naughty 11 year old child who wants okay. to play tricks on people all the time okay. it's very amusing yeah. but like this dry sense of humor would it like just crush you like a bug thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one like... of those uh, it's, yeah definitely yeah not for everyone. Yeah. Eleven yeah. year. Okay, that's progress. With AI, like, do you see um, S script as something that could be used for like machine learning or um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, anything like that, because that's yeah. pretty big. That's great idea. Uh, I think we, we even released a, a few examples how to integrate Bitcoin with AI and machine learning. For example, one example is uh, we have this uh, smart contract. What does it do? Because a, a lot of times uh, uh, machine learning, if you have a, you need a big, big, gigantic data set, right? Which, which puts a very high barrier to entry. You know, if you want to have some very good uh, machine learning algorithm, but you just cannot afford to train the data. Or, you know, then you can kind of like a crowdsource into a smart contract, what does this do? So basically you said, if you give me the good training data, I would just pay this amount, but you have to make sure. Oh, your, that's a good idea. Certain yeah. criteria, for example, you have to be the best, uh, you have to make the best prediction, you have the least error, you know, you can, mm -hmm. so you can enable almost like a marketplace for all this training data. So, and you don't have to pretty much remove the trust, right? Because if you give me the good data set, meeting these requirements, you get paid. So that's, that's, that's one way. And also, uh, we also launched a few examples. How do you put like a small list like an AI mo module called a, uh, I think it's a perceptual. So we implement that, coded that in S script. I don't think it's going to be usable in large scale right now, but it's just something fun to, to cool to code coding because then it's almost like you have the building block, you have the perceptron, then you can build a bigger and bigger neural net if you want on Bitcoin. And the good thing about the Bitcoin blockchain, right, is it's in the public and it can be viewed by everybody. So you kind of have like a almost like a public uh, goods. So if you have the model over there and a lot of people they can just view as this a single source of truth and use this training data they can also collaborate it doesn't matter where it is right mm -hmm. so it has a lot of ways i just list a few examples but i'm not like a ai machine learning expert so for, for us we always come with some demo and cool use cases so other people can they're all like a domain expert they can come in and they can take it to the next next level. Yeah. Amazing. So much uh, mm. so much possibility anyway. Yeah, literally I think that's why I, I don't feel like a machine is going to replace my job anytime soon. So <laughs> it's uh it's it's not a kind of like a mechanical thing. You, you, you there's no guarantee, right? It's uncertain. You, you don't know whether some good ideas come to you tomorrow today, tomorrow, the the year after machines it's like a doing kind of at least to me it's like some predictable you know manual mechanic stuff right add this thing mm -hmm. to that thing and uh, it's also even for gdp uh, gpt3 right it's coming from whoever's yeah. built i think it's yeah. the intelligence behind that the, the machines just do what humans do so that's why i, I don't worry about uh, singularity well, and, i know what you mean because the, the, the logic puzzle may be a computer's really good at solving but then you somebody has to understand the world to understand what the problems that need to be solved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so that's, yeah, so, so uh, that's why I feel it's always a good thing. So the humans yes. and the machine work together. I think we have the, this guy combining the strengths, right? The innovation and also this, uh, the productivity of the machines. So it's, it's good combination. It's like any other tool, a knife, right? Or mm. car. It's, I don't think it's going to replace me anytime soon. Maybe certain type of jobs, but uh, it's always a. Uh, if you look at the history of technology, right? When people first in invented light bulbs, I think, I think there's some strike on the street. Uh, people, you know, the oh, workers. because of the gas. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. that would be a job. Or when people. Mm. You know, well, people were quite scared of it as well because it was something they were not used to. So a lot of people did see it like some kind of evil magic. And also, I think when they first like installed like like light bulbs in places like churches and things, they were on really long kind of wires that were just dangling, and then just the bulb was just kind of in there and you could hear them crackling and everything and they were quite mm -hmm. dangerous if you put too much of a load in them they would just pop so mm -hmm. people were quite scared of, of you know if you've got these mini explosions going off and you've got this crackling and then this kind of you know magic that they didn't understand how how it all worked 
I think uh, what I heard is when the photography first invented, I think people were like uh, afraid they would yeah. take the, they were soul. Take the soul, so they mm. refused to be filmed. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, Bitcoin is almost the same. The same is like any advanced technology, almost like a magic. So people, mm. I think, uh, I think crypto people maybe get it a little bit, but for if you look at all the mainstream narratives, it's always it's always bad. It's like yeah. A, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. They always do pick, pick on the, the, the greatest fear factor of what, you know, the worst scenario case of what could happen. So anything that could actually instill fear into people is something that they always like to put out there instead of, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's to be expected then. Because any, as we talk about light bulbs or guitar sensationalism. Bulbs, so it's always, it, it, I think a lot of people, they probably watch the video like, uh, Bill Gates get interviewed on some talk show. He talk about the internet, radio on the internet, and people mock him about why do you want to, you know, have you heard about this thing called a radio in a car? I can just, why do I have to listen to the radio? I think it's always like uh, innovation always coming from the niche because that's almost by definition. If the, if the majority already accept this idea, that's not uh, something innovative about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's always coming from the fringe. And then as people, more and more people see that the light and the uh, usage yeah. and this, or maybe that says maybe that says in bsv or on the fringe it, it will i would not be i would not be here if it's not in the fringe mm -hmm. because it, it's pretty much if it's already mainstream that's not too much, late yeah yeah too late yeah. and also your, your impact will be smaller and minimum also, yes mm -hmm. so it's a good i think it's a good time and we are in a good place. I think I probably don't want to join face, uh, no, Bitcoin 10 years ago, right? I may have the same idea and same product, but, uh, you know, how many people are using Bitcoin to be very frustrated? It's my contract in 2012. Yeah, it's a big difference. Like, um, I didn't realize my state, Ohio, um, you could pay your taxes in oh, yeah. Bitcoin, but then, then they got rid of it because only 10 people, you know, or knew about it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But now, like, you know, if they put that back, I'm sure a lot more people would be using it and then more exposure to just, you know, cryptocurrency itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, yeah, you can see the the growing adoption. I, I think, at well, least I wouldn't say adoption because <laughs> it's mostly speculation at this moment. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, your people are aware of it, which is uh, not a bad thing for us. Yeah. But we are I was like, going to... I the forgot to ask, um, what's your, your like first operating system or what's your first computer that you, that got you into all of this? That's a good question. Oh, for me, <laughs> as a age, I think, uh, I come from like a rural place in China. So that's no, I haven't seen any computer until I get into high school. And that's how mm -hmm. I first saw it. I, I, I was like not into it because, you know, for me, I was, um, uh, you know, I can be very nerdy, but also I, I like to go outside and play with people outside. So <laughs> it's Windows, Windows. I think Windows. a lot of companies need people like like you that's creative um, because you need someone that can think outside the box and not, you know, doing something, the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, you get a lot of people that are just, you know, they, they're just all computer all day, all night. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, think uh, I may use to do that if I have really have some work I need to focus on, and I can do that mm -hmm. all day, every day. That's fine. But uh, other than that, I, I think uh, it's always good to have uh, you know, guys, guys, I talk to people and uh, learn new stuff. And then when you implement, then I'm like, I'm almost like a monk. I can stay here all day long. I'm like a lockdown myself. I'm just here coding mm -hmm. all day. Uh, that's how the, I get the first version out. So the kind of like I talk about when we release it, but uh, even before that, so I went to CoinGeek. Uh, so that's this uh, Bitcoin Association pitch day. So that's why I think it's not like a altruistic project because I did get funding from by pitching in front of uh, investors at that mm -hmm. event. That's how it came up to me. What made you leave China? Oh, just uh, doing a PhD in the in the states. And which yeah. university was it that you went to? Did you? Oh, uh, uh, beg your pardon. Which, which which university did you go to? Oh, it's called Wayne State in Detroit. Okay. 
yeah. It's okay. uh, yeah, it's a it's a very strange uh, location. It's a bra- I, I think it's a brave move because, like, you know, you're quite young when you're at university, and yes. you know, moving from China to America is such a different mm-hmm. cultural. Yes, yeah. So that's job. why I kind of feel lucky. Like, uh, I first I go, you know, in the east, and now in the west, so I kind of see the kind of both, uh, you know, the world experiencing, and also I first get into you know, Detroit, and then I'm in Silicon Valley. Mm. One is almost like the poorest place in the, in the yeah. state. The other is almost like the most affluent. So it's, mm. yeah, it's good to experience to, to see the both sides. So you can, I think it's just, uh, at least for human experience, is uh, if you to see the two sides of things, you kind of, you can see a lot of it through the mm. hype, or, mm. you know, yeah. the, the drama mm. side of things, you know. So is, the there anything, is there anything you miss about home? Because I, I, I really miss genuine Chinese food. I think for me, I think at least before COVID, I'm uh, traveling. So I, I, for me, it's almost like it's not a dichotomy. So I can always go. It's just one flight away. But of mm-hmm. course, now I have more restrictions now. But before COVID, it was, yeah, I, I travel. So not not a big problem. I think it's good for vacation and stuff. But uh, if you just want to work and have a you know, stable life, yeah, that, that, yeah, the California is pretty good. I mean, they have some crazy stuff in the city, but <laughs> <laughs> the suburb is pretty, pretty nice. It's very nice. The weather-wise, it's like a location. You know, you have the beach, you have the mountain. Yeah, the a lot of variety. But, yeah. yeah. So for me, I'm like always like being outside. I was in Michigan for like six years, Detroit. It was like half a year snow every every year. It was like mm-hmm. it's. It's uh, kind of like Ohio, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm like it's a little bit too much, too much snow for me, too cold. <laughs> uh, you cannot go outside for, for pretty much. Yeah, up. you get that Lake Erie weather. Yeah, Lake Erie. <laughs> all the snow coming from all directions. Big uh-huh. lakes, you know, the big lakes. I like the uh, big lakes in the summer. It's very, the weather's uh, mild, and beautiful, you know, it's cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Shannon. Yeah. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah, and we've got great things that are coming then from Escript and you being at Dubai and then presenting as well. So hopefully that goes really well for you. And um, carry on with the education as well, because that's something that is really needed. And, and, you know, thank you very much for being the person in the space to actually do yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, I think, it's, uh, that, that, I think uh, it's really a pleasure to be on this show because it's very like a unique type of show because <laughs> it's, uh, it's not uh, business or you know technology focus I think we all need to like it is it's a lot of time I think of especially for outside people to come in they want to see this friendly welcoming message side of things it's not it's different from Twitter because you go to Twitter just for Twitter it's, <laughs> it's a lot of drama you know it's the yeah it's not uh, good for onboarding new users, so that's yeah. why we have a good new space here. I'm uh, very happy to come up here, and uh, hopefully, I can come back. We have more new updates. In the yeah, future. please do oh, definitely. Thank you. And yeah. we, I also want to say, I mean, we're so grateful that people have accepted us within the space and actually want to come on as on the show as well. So, yeah. I mean, I yeah. really appreciate from my point of view and perspective as well all the welcome that we've had within the space and the real lovely positive comments as well. And and hopefully, we are helping to educate people. So, yeah. thank you so much. Right. Keep up the good work and uh, show the friendly. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Uh, I'm inspired to learn script. A script now. So. Okay. Yeah. Why ask yeah. and uh, ask me anytime. Yeah. Ask thank me. you. Anytime. Ask me anything. Okay. <laughs> ask me anything. Yes. You might regret that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, Bye. thank you so much, shall we? Let's we'll say goodbye Bruce, to everyone. Bruce, goodbye. Bruce. Till next time. See you next time. See you around. Bye.